Hey guys, Theo here from Believe Hi-Fi, and today we've got an awesome review. It's ZMF Verite Closed Back Headphone. So, let's jump into it. Who is this headphone for? Well, I would say it's someone trying to chase a flagship level of sound quality because this headphone here is indeed a flagship worth your consideration. Now that does come with a flagship price point. In the US, it's about two and a half thousand dollars. Where I'm from in Australia, up to four thousand Australian dollars for the pair of headphones. Now, is it worth it? Let's jump into that later. One thing I do want to cover off before we get into this is ZMF and as a brand, what's their house sound and who are they? Well, they're a small or relatively small company based out of America and they make headphones that are handcrafted and they like to use a lot of wood and things like some big screws. So when we get into the design, it's going to be really interesting and it might not be your thing, but for me, I think it's pretty unique and pretty cool. Another thing with ZMF is it seems that their sound signature has really hit the mark with a lot of audiophiles or people that are just generally into headphone listening experiences. So let's move on. All right, so let's run through how this unit looks. So this is how it comes in this really nice box with ZMF imprinted in there. So opening it up here, these are the universe pads. So it's a separate pair of pads and I'll get into that later. Also, you get a nice personal card here, which is actually wood and is signed off and shown that it's been tested and it's been assembled by Zach himself and it's also signed. Also in here, you get a bag for the cables and obviously here are the headphones and I think they look really, really nice. As you can see, they've got a really nice finish on the wood and the leather just feels really awesome all around. You've also got ZMF imprinted here into the headband and onto the right and left side, you've got the V for Verite. Your markings for right and left are just inside here. Now, while these do look really good at a glance, I still think they're not built as well as some of the premier brands like Sennheiser and Hi-Fi I mean, looking really closely at some of the pieces like the holes here, and just the general feel of them, I don't think they're quite up to par with, as I said before, brands like Focal or Sennheiser or Hyphenman. Now, pulling off the pads, they're really easy to change. These are the Otor pads and they come stock fitted, is the inside of the headphone. And as you can see, as I said, they're handmade and they've, they've actually been screwed in here and they look really retro to me, actually. Now, underneath this plastic grill houses the beryllium coated driver. Now, beryllium is used in another flagship called the Focal Utopia and is known for being a really light material that's also really rigid, meaning that you can get some really accurate detail out of the headphone. It is fairly heavy, but not too bad, and it is quite bulky, as you can see. However, for me, I've been listening with this headphone for up to six, seven hours a day, just using it as a daily driver, watching YouTube videos, playing a few games and listening to music. And I found them to be fairly comfortable and all in all, a really well-built headphone, just with one problem in my set. I found that while you can screw the ear cups off, I actually had a problem where the right side actually fell off a few times. And you can see even now, that it's coming a little bit loose. So I had a few instances where the ear cup actually fell off. But anyways, that's enough for the build of this headphone. So let's get into how this headphone sounds because I'm sure that's what you're most interested in hearing. Now, ZMF as a brand have a really enjoyable sound signature to my ear. One that focuses on a really lush sound experience with very natural sounding timbre and tonality. And that's something that really resonates with me and my philosophy on an enjoyable music experience. Now, 
that really neutral timbre and tonality lends itself awesomely when it's trying to reproduce vocals and most instruments. You put all that together with an engaging sound experience and you've got a really enjoyable listen, especially when it comes to acoustic music, jazz music, anything, as I said before, that's revolved around vocals and instruments. Now, in terms of the frequency response, to my ear at least, I think in the upper mids, it just it seems to be ever so slightly recessed. And then it seems to kick up just in that well, where the brilliance treble range starts, maybe 7, 8K around there. And I find this is trying to sort of excite the experience, but it can be just a little hot sometimes over long, long listening sessions. But putting aside those small inconsistencies in the EQ curve, from bottom to top, generally speaking, you've got quite a nice balance all the way from the bass up into the highs of the treble. Now, one more thing to get out of the way before we jump into things like staging, imaging, bass, mids, and treble all separately, is that out of the flagships, I felt like I just did lack a little bit of that really dynamic punch that something like a Focal Utopia gave me. However, this does beat it out in terms of the tonality and the timbre and staging and the imaging. So it's a trade-off right there, right? Before we get into staging and imaging, it's really important to go over the pads this headphone comes with because depending on your choice of pad, you're gonna get quite a different experience. So let me walk you through it. My pair came fitted with the Otour pad and had another pair of pads in there called the Universe pads. Now, I'm gonna break this into soundstage, imaging, and frequency response along with my experience. But I'm just gonna run through it quickly because I don't wanna go on and ramble forever. Now, generally speaking, the Otour pad seems to give a wider soundstage. Now, this is probably because it pulls the headphone a little bit further away from the ears and actually angles the headphone slightly and how the sound comes into contact with the ears. What does this give you? Well, obviously, as I said, you're going to have a wider sound stage and it's also going to actually put the mids a bit further back. So whereas the universe pad has a narrower sound stage, it actually makes it feel like you're sitting maybe in the front few rows at the concert whereas the Otour pad may be somewhere in the middle or a little bit further back from there. Another interesting thing is the imaging. With the Otour pad, I found the imaging to be sort of all around me. You'd have sounds sort of coming behind you off to the side and it was quite engaging and engrossing and it, you know, it seemed like a lot of fun, really. Whereas I think the universe is a little bit more true to source and I think it's a better reference when it comes to imaging because the soundstage seems to have quite a bit more depth and you get more of a 3D solid image in front of you. So for me I think in imaging the universe excels whereas with the or tour pad it's a bit more fun and you get a wider soundstage. Other than that I also think the EQ is more correct with the Universe pad. I think on the Otour pad, what I said before about that, that upper mid recession, I think it's a little bit more exaggerated. And I think there's also even a slight recession in the upper bass frequency. So you get a little bit of like a W shaped um, frequency response. What does this do? It kind of makes the the bass, the mids, and the highs a little bit more separated, and I think it lends even more to that wide soundstage. So let's move on into the bass, the mids, and the treble. All right, let's start with the bass performance of this headphone. Now, it is a dynamic headphone, and I need to say that it does seem to be a little bit rolled off, and those sub-bass frequencies just don't come through as well as some of the high-end or flagship planar magnetic headphones. However, when it comes to the quality of the bass you do get, especially say from 50 hertz and up, you're getting a really textured and detailed bass response. I mean, I was really impressed with just the micro detail and texture that this headphone could bring out of those deep, deep bass notes. 
let's move on to the mids because the mids are the star of the show, in my opinion. And I think most ZMF headphones have the mids as the star of the show. I think they just really sound awesome. If you like vocals and you like the sound of, you know, a guitar just simply playing or a drum kit or just any instruments really and any vocals and a simple piece of music, you want to engage yourself in that music. I think this is the flagship for you. I really, really enjoyed vocals on this headphone. I never had an experience where male vocals would sound boxy. I never had female vocals sounding sibilant or shrill. Just generally speaking, the vocals are really engaging, really accurate, and sound really beautiful and really natural. Now, treble, as I said before, it's a mixed bag. Well, Actually, it's not a mixed bag if we're going to talk about detail because this is a really detailed headphone and the treble is really detailed too. I think there are some flagships that are slightly more detailed, but this does a great job of being very detailed without being too bright. However, as I said before, that 7, 8K around that area, there is a little bit of a peak. But that does add some brilliance, you know? It does add some sparkle, it does add some extra flair, and it does make the sound a little bit more exciting if that's the kind of thing that you're into. But all in all, from the bass, the mids, the treble, really good package here and something that's pretty hard to beat for me, and I think it well deserves its title as a flagship headphone. Now, as in my previous video and all my future videos, just a few comparisons because you may have a few other sets of headphones or other pieces of equipment that you personally own or have listened to. And with giving you a comparison, it's quite easy to actually go, hmm, actually, yeah, I know, I know this headphone did this, but it didn't quite do this. So hopefully it helps you guys out. Now, let's go into the Focal Utopia, maybe the most spoken about flagship headphone. I think the Utopia is a little bit more detailed and gives you definitely more impact and slam to the sound. Although you do trade off, you get a narrower soundstage with the Utopias and you get a slight metallic vibe to the timbre and the tone and that's really why I prefer the Verite closed for me because I really, really want that natural sounding mid-range you know vocals and instruments for me are almost everything however when i listen to edm or some of those other genres i do miss a bit of that slam the and the dynamism of the utopia and sometimes that really sharp micro detail retrieval is really impressive and it's a tough choice i mean if i could i'd own both <laughs> All right, um, another pair of headphones would be the HD 800. Now, I think they're quite a little bit like chalk and cheese. The HD 800 is much more pulled back. You know, the mids, everything is sort of far away from you. And the soundstage is even wider, much wider than even the um, Otor pads. And again, you get a slightly metallic sound and a much brighter signature than you've got here with the Verite closed. Now, for me personally, I would much rather the Verite closed, and I think most of you, if you listened back to back, would agree with me. However, it is about double the price, so keep that into consideration. Now, one last reference point is the LCD4. Where this lacks that sub bass, I think the LCD4, that's where it comes in. Um, and I think that it really beats it out when it comes to sub bass. And I think it can really contend when it comes to a really nice sounding timbre and tone. You know, you get really lovely vocals with a lot of the Odyssey headphones. Detail wise, it's close. It's really close and it depends what you're going for in, in detail. I think sort of hearing the room and hearing those those kind of details that you don't usually look for. I think the Verite Closed has it, but detail in a general sense, I think it was easier to pick out the small things in the LCD4. Um, 
I also did think the LCD 4 was a little bit more of a laid back presentation and a bit more soothing and relaxed, whereas the Verite close with that that sparkle and that in that brilliance range made it a bit more in your face and a bit more of an engaging, fun experience. Again, personally, I went with purchasing the Verite closed because I actually pre preferred it even for the lower price point. So that's it for comparisons and I hope that it helped out in making a purchasing decision. Well guys, I hope that helped a lot and I really enjoyed making this video so I hope you enjoyed listening to it and tuning in. But for me right now, I'm signing out. So please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me and it'll help grow the channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.